Welcome to EPART Sala. Today I am going to discuss about the restriction endonuclease and isocytomers and new isocytomers. First of all, I would like to give you some brief about what is the endonuclease, what its relevance, what are the different types of restriction endonuclease, as well as uh, what is the usage of this. And at the end, I will give you the summary. So, initially, first of all, we should know why do we need in restriction endonuclease. Basically, restriction endonuclease is also called a molecular scissors or a scalpels. What does it mean? It means that suppose if you want to manipulate the DNA or suppose if you want to do something with the DNA in order to understand what is the exact nature of the stretch of that particular DNA, you can use the restriction endonuclease or you can use the restriction enzyme. As I said to you that it is also called the molecular scissors because how it works. Let us say suppose there is a DNA double helix. And in the DNA double helix, if you want to cut a specific stretch of that helix in order to clone or in order to know what is the efficacy, what is the expression pattern and how this particular fragment is able to change the gene per se, then you can use this uh, restriction endonuclease. How it works? Suppose, let us say there is a DNA sequence and in the DNA sequence, there has to be some recognition site. And that recognition site can be read by restriction endonuclease and it can recognize a particular base pair and then it cut. Second thing, there are different kinds of restriction endonuclease which has a different, it is called cutter. Like if the 4 base pair is called 4 cutter, 6 base pair is called 6 cutter and 8 base pair is called 8 cutter restriction endonuclease. So, let us start with the, some history and background of the restriction endonuclease. Restriction enzymes were first identified and discovered by Werner Arbor in early 60s and however, it was not that uh, means like it clicked. So, what happened that in 1970, Nathan and Smith first isolated the restriction endonuclease successfully and for that in 1978, Nobel Prize has been given to this trio that is Werner, Nathan and Smith. A nomenclature part, let us say. Suppose if you uh, heard the name of eco R1. So, how this eco R1 works? Let us say eco R1, E stands for Isertia, CO stands for coli, which is a, derived from the bacterium, so E. coli, and R is a strain, and 1 is the first enzyme isolated from that particular species, and that is the why it is called eco R1. Likewise, HIN3. HIN3 is coming from the Haemophilus influenza, and the D is the strain type, and third means that uh, it comes from the same bacteria and, and the nomenclature is third because it is the third isolated uh, restriction enzyme. So, I can give you the glimpse of different restriction enzymes like eco R1, HIN3, BAMH in a consolidated table that okay, what is the genus, what is the species, strain, what is the number of uh, isolation and you can also see the recognition sequences of these restriction endonucleases. Now, come to the point, what is the type of restriction endonuclease? And here you can see there are different types of the restriction endonuclease, right? In type 1, type 2, type 3 and type 4. In type 1, it is a cleave at random site, means it's, it can be 1000 base pair away or it can be upstream or downstream. So, this restriction enzyme type 1 is not that very specific and it has the different characteristics such as it has multiple subunit complex and uh, the, there are different cofactors which is called S adenine methionine, different salt ions and as well as ATP. Now, come to the type 2 and type 2 is the most important restriction, endo, restriction endonuclease which is useful for the DNA manipulation. Let us say it is a very specific first slide on the DNA stretch, recognize their sequence and cut in palindromic way. What is the palindrome? Palindrome means that sequence should be 5 prime to 3 prime is exactly like in the antisense strain. Suppose if G A A T T C is the 5 prime to 3 prime, if you read in the antisense strain from 5 prime to 3 prime, again, again it will say like G A A T T C. I will explain you this later, but here this is the most specific restriction endonuclease which is useful for the DNA manipulation, cloning, and many more purposes. Come to the third category that is a type 3 restriction endonuclease and here you can see it cleaves outside in the recognition sequence and uh, require two restriction sites in opposite directions. Okay? And the characteristics of this restriction endonuclease type 3 is it can modify the enzyme, cut at different location within the 
25 base pair region. Fourth type of the restriction endonuclease is type 4, which is basically cleave the methylated DNA and it also requires magnesium ion as a cofactor. Now come to the overhangs. First of all, you should understand what is the nature of restriction enzyme. First, second thing, how it cuts, and third, if it cuts, what kind of overhang it produces. So basically, there are three different types of restriction enzyme. One is a sticky end. It provides a sticky end, second is the staggered or blunt end, and third is the three prime overhang. It's also a, a sticky end. So if you can go with the five prime overhang and it, uh, denotes all the four different nucleotides that is A, T, C, and G. So five prime overhangs recognized by the restriction enzyme in the five prime area and it cleaves and it cleaves in such a way that it can give a five prime overhang. Likewise, in the three prime overhang, it can cut from the three prime direction and it uh, give you the three prime overhangs while if it's in between the DNA sequence it can give you the blunt end. So now you understand what is the five prime overhang, three prime overhang and blunt end. So here I can give you the consolidated uh, list of some important restriction endonuclease and their source recognition pattern that is five prime to three prime and what is the base pair and overhangs. So if you can go one by one PVU, it gives you a sticky end as a six cutter restriction enzyme, while as ECO R1, BGL1, HINT3, BAMH1, SAL1, these all are the six cutter restriction enzyme and give you a sticky end with the different overhangs. Now come to the four cutter restriction enzymes, and four cutter restriction enzymes are SAL1, TAC1, HAE3, these and HAPA1. These are four base pair long restriction endonuclease type 2. You can see that in the four cutter restriction enzyme, you will have again the blunt as well as the sticky end. Now come to the eight cutter restriction enzyme, which is the NOT1. And you can see that this is the eight base pair, and this eight base pair can cut in a, a sticky end fashion at the five prime overhangs. So this list can give you a detailed idea what is the overhangs, what is the ends, that is a sticky end or a staggered end, and different recognition pattern from five prime direction to the three prime direction. Now come to the mechanism of action, how this, these restriction enzymes are working. And here you can see what happens. Suppose if you have a DNA molecule that has to be cleave, and for that you add the restriction enzyme in a particular fashion. And what is happening here, these restriction enzymes first recognize their recognition site, which is present in the DNA stretch. Then what is happened, it binds to that DNA at recognition sequence, then it gives a single cut to the sugar phosphate backbone in the double helix means sense strand as well as in the anti sense strand and fourth it hydrolyzing the phosphodiester bond and thus you can have a particular desired DNA stretch which you want to be cleaved. What are the different factors that accurately work the that enable restriction enzymes to accurately work and for that you need the first and most important is the temperature. Some restriction enzyme can work at lower temperature while some in a higher temperature. So let's say the most common temperature for the restriction endonuclease is 37 degrees centigrade. So you need a correct temperature to work for a restriction endonuclease then salt concentration. Salt concentration is also an important factor for the restriction endonuclease and third is the pH because you have to maintain a physiological or balanced pH in order to cut the DNA very specifically and in a proper way. Fourth is the cellular homeostasis because these restriction enzymes are derived from the microorganisms. So you have to give a condition which can mimic the biological or cellular homeostasis so that it can say that okay this enzyme is coming from one particular organism and that is the reason why it's we have to give a particular homeostasis to have the best efficacy of the restriction endonuclease. Now we should understand we have already learned four cutter restriction enzyme, six cutter restriction enzyme and eight cutter restriction enzyme. Now, how it works? What are the different frequency of these restriction endonuclease? Let's say four cutter restriction enzyme, which means n to the power four. And here again, as I said in the previous slide, n is a t c d. So four to the power four is two fifty six, which means any restriction enzyme which has four cutter can invariably or indiscriminately digest the DNA or chop the DNA at every two hundred fifty six base pair. While in the six cutter, again, come to the power n to the power six. So n to the power 6 means 4 to the power 6 is equals to 4096 base pair and again here 
फोर कटर स्टिक्स इन एंजाइम टू फिफ्टी सिक्स बेस पेयर सिक्स कटर स्टिक्स इन एंजाइम फोर जीरो नाइन सिक्स बेस पेयर एंड लाइक वाइज एट कटर स्टिक्स इन एंजाइम विल क्लीव डीएनएंगा let's say we want to check expression artificially we cannot do every time inside the body because it's come on a gene therapy and gene therapy is not that easy even in the gene therapy we have to manipulate the dna and for that you need restriction rest endonuclease so what happen here that first of all we have to manipulate the dna in order to prepare or in order to generate clone second checking the polymorphism how you check the polymorphism of a gene and this can be easily done by restriction endonuclease let's say example of the rflp restriction fragment length polymorphism third is the forensic science like you have heard about the dna fingerprinting dna fingerprinting or uh, is exclusively be done by the different restriction enzyme third is the restriction mapping suppose if you want to know what is the exact physical map of a particular dna stretch you should you need uh, restriction enzyme which can give you a particular physical but not particular exact physical distance of dna third is generation of the dna libraries generation of the dna libraries is also important in order to understand the gene expression or gene profiling and for that you again need the restriction endonuclease and this restriction endonuclease can help you to prepare different kind of library whether it's a cdna library or it's a dna or a genomic library now come to the last point that is the creation of the gene chip even you can heard about lot of gene chips which can give you in information at is one time and huge number of information and again here you need restriction endonuclease in order to understand better how these gene chips are working i'll explain you one by one first start with the dna manipulation and the cloning so you can see that suppose if we have prepared an artificial vector for that again you need a restriction endonuclease and suppose if you have a artificial vector subtle vector or any kind of vector from any origin it has some promoter region poly a region origin of replication region and antibiotic resistant region and here you can see that you will have a multiple cloning site which is called the mcs or polylinker and this polylinker is have is having the array of different restriction enzyme which is compatible in such a way that you can clone in particular fashion let's say suppose you can see here there is a 10 different examples where i have where you can see different restriction enzyme in per fragment and the every fragment you have a different set of restriction enzyme you have to match this restriction enzyme strictly in a 5 prime to 3 prime orientation if you want to prepare an anti sense cloning you can go for, by the 3 prime to 5 prime but if you prepare the sense clone or uh, physical clone then you have to go from the 5 prime to 3 prime direction and you have to understand why these uh, different uh, fragments are able to give you the exact nature of gene expression so these are the tif 10 different examples and you have to match from the 5 prime to 3 prime direction in the vector so lower lower panel is the insert while upper panel is the subtle vector with the multiple sequence of um, uh, multiple cloning sites and here you have to add these two that is called the ligation and then you can generate a foreign Uh, particle in a particular vector and this is called the clone or construct second is the rflp suppose if you have a, a um, isomer or if you have a isoforms of a very closely related gene let's say talk about the cytochrome p450 cytochrome p450 super family has a 2c uh, sub family which has uh, different genes and this these genes have having the peculiarity of 90 to 95% sequence similarity suppose if you want to pinpoint exactly exactly what is the real difference between one isoform cyp 2c isoform with the different cyp 2c isoform you can use the different restriction endonuclease in order to understand the rflps and here you can see that when you can see in the both the uh, slide when we have digested the uh, genomic dna using restriction endonuclease four cutter restriction and we have got this pattern and after sudden hybridization the down 
in, in, in down panel you can see that you have got some different signals which is uh, which is different than the all other signals and i have given you a, a small uh, stretch of homologs that suppose there is a 6 kb homologs of dna based dna stretch and the 6 kb homologs if you have different uh, if you have a liberty to use different restriction enzyme you can chop that dna very easily and you can you can say that okay what is the real probe we can generate in order to isolate or fish out the particular or gene of interest in a big chunk of dna so this can be used for the uh, restriction fragment length polymorphism or polymorphism per se so the third usage of the restriction in your nuclease is uh, uh, restriction mapping so suppose if we have a very big chunk of dna let's say 30 kilo base pair DNA and in the 30 kilo base pair DNA suppose if I have only one restriction enzyme we can go for uh, cleavage and in the cleavage it can give a two or three different fragments like in the uh, uh, you can see in the right hand panel the enzyme one has given six three and eight kilo base pair fragments while enzyme two I'm, I mean restriction enzyme two is given seven and ten kilo base pair fragment but what is in between and you can see suppose if i can use the enzyme 1 and enzyme 2 what would happen you can have intermediate sequence which were masked in single digestion that is the using of this one restriction enzyme so instead of using one restriction enzyme if we can go for the two restriction enzymes we can have the better understanding of the physical map or physical length of a particular dna now come to the point isocytomers what is the isocytomers as you can see iso means similar restriction enzyme that have the same recognition sequence as well as the same cleavage site and when you have this kind of architecture of a dna or if you can have this these kind of possibility this is called the isocytomers example for the isocytomer is sph1 and bbu1 and here you can see the recognition sequence is gc cg tacg in both the restriction enzymes and the recognition pattern is 3 prime overhang at g you can see it here very clearly that Although these are the two different restriction enzymes, but the recognition sequence and cleavage pattern is same. Definition of the new isocytomers is the restriction enzyme that have the same recognition sequence, but cleave the DNA at a different site within that sequence are ne called new isocytomers. And the best example is SAMA1 and XMA1. I want to explain this XMA1 and SAMA1. XMA1 is a six cutter restriction enzyme, while SAMA1 is also a six cutter restriction enzyme, but the XMA1 cut in the 5 prime overhang fashion that is the sticky end but the same sequence when it cut by the sama 1 it, it will give you blunt end so xma 1 and sama 1 is the best example of the new isocytomers where you can see that x at one end it give you 5 prime overhang while on the other hand it can give you the blunt end it's a sticky end as well as the blunt end the third type is isocytomers it's a pair of restriction enzymes that have slightly different recognition sequence but after cut generate identical stretch what does it mean like suppose uh, th there are two six cutter restriction enzyme called mbo1 and bamh1 so mb1 and bamh1 in the initial uh, nucleotide which is denoted here is the n is different with the bamh1 but the cleavage pattern which is also a five prime end and, and it's a, a sticky end and it give gatc which is similar in the both the sequence that is mbo1 and bamh1 so what is the difference difference is difference is only the initial nucleotide which can be different but the cleavage pattern is similar in both the restriction enzyme so before concluding my talk i would like to give you the glimpse of restriction endonuclease as well as the isocytomers new isocytomers and clodomers so first restriction enzymes are digesting dna only at a specific recognition site this is the most important thing and therefore it is quite manageable to understand the physical length of a DNA fragment within the boundary of two restriction sites. What does it mean? It means that this is not only give us the precise information and sequence of DNA, rather enable us to manipulate the DNA with the desired gene of interest. The second point that classification and classification is like that. Restriction enzymes, as I said in the beginning, that broadly classified under four categories based on the proximity of recognition site and cleavage pattern. Moreover, the restriction enzymes 
digests DNA double strand by making two incisions in sugar phosphate backbone on each DNA strand. Third point is what is the difference between restriction enzymes and modification enzymes? So for that, that restriction enzyme cuts the DNA strand within the sequence. However, there are different DNA fragment which has to modify in order to cloning purpose. And for that, the enzymes which modifies the various ends or the two different ends of DNA is called modification enzyme. For example, T4 polynucleotide kinase, which adds phosphate at 5 prime end, whereas alkaline phosphatase, which is removing phosphate from 5 prime ends. Likewise, ligase, it can join two DNA fragments during the cloning process as well as the T4 DNA polymerase, which can fill in with the help of DNTPs. Another important point in restriction en enzyme chapter is type 2 restriction enzymes are mostly palindromic in nature, which means the reading of sequence from 5 prime to 3 prime and 3 prime to 5 prime is same. For example, ECOR1, which is GAA TTC. If you read this restriction site from both the ends, it will appear the same, and that is why it's called palindromic sequence. However, restriction enzymes produces 5 prime and 3 prime overhangs that I have already explained in my previous slides that what has happened in the 6 cutter restriction enzymes when it in season is at the 5 prime end and at the 3 prime end and thus it gives 5 prime and 3 prime overhangs which is also generating or which is also called the cohesive or sticky ends. However, sometime when the digestion is in between the equal number of nucleotide sequence, it produced the blunt or staggered end and thus this is useful for the blunt and cloning. Now come to the next point that the origination and source of the different restriction enzymes and you can see in the table that I have already explained <coughs> before that what are the different bacterial source of organism through which enzymes have been produced. Enzymes have been produced second, the recognition sequences, third, the different ends what are the different characteristics of restriction enzyme, whether it's a 6-cutter, 4-cutter, or 8-cutter restriction enzyme, and at the same time, what kind of end it's producing, whether it's a 3-prime overhangs, 5-prime overhangs, or blunt end. In the end, I just want to give that what this special restriction enzymes are doing, that this special restriction enzymes, their restriction enzyme that have the same recognition sequence, as well as the same cleavage sites are called isocytomers. For example, SPH1 and BB1, where restriction enzymes that have the same recognition sequence but cleave the DNA at different sites within that sequence are called neocytomers. And another type where the pair of restriction enzymes that have slightly different recognition sequence but after cut generates identical stretch is called isocytomers. To summarize my talk, uh, I can give you now, the, now you can understand the glimpses of the different restriction endonuclease first of all. It digests the DNA at your desired recognition site, but only you have to know what is the exact DNA sequence, DNA sequence. So suppose if you have the DNA sequence information, you can use a particular restriction enzyme which can cut in a very specific fashion of that DNA stretch and it can give you the desired fragment either for the cloning purpose or for the preparation of probe or for the any different uh, aspect. Now come to the cloning and polymorphism as I, I, as I explained to you that in order if suppose if you want to clone a foreign fragment of DNA in a particular vector, how would you do? Now you can do in suppose if you can digest a particular DNA stretch using two restriction enzymes and if the same restriction enzyme is also present in the vector polylinker region, you can digest vector 
with the same two different restriction enzyme you digest the insert with the same two restriction enzyme you can clone it which is called the ligation third thing is let's say you have a pcr amplicon and if you don't have any restriction enzyme for your convenience what you can do you prepare a primer in such a way that you can load the restriction enzyme on the forward primer as well as on the reverse primer and what you can do you can just amplify the product and the amplicon you can digest with a, that particular restriction enzyme which you have loaded already and the same restriction enzyme if prepared in the, if present in the uh, vector multiple cloning sequence site you can easily clone the amplicon which has already been digested with the two restriction enzyme into a vector but before any cloning you have to prepare a cloning strategy and that cloning strategy will tell you what two suitable restriction enzyme because for the cloning you must have two identical restriction enzyme present in the vector as well as in the insert but the most important thing that particular restriction enzyme has the unique site what what does it mean unique site unique site means that in the entire region there there has to be only one restriction enzyme in the insert as well as this one time restriction enzyme in the vector suppose if you have the two different uh, one restriction enzyme with the two different side it will cut more fragments so in order to clone you must have two identical restriction side in the in, in the insert as well as in the vector which you have to prepare in advance while you are, you are doing the cloning strategy come to the dna sequencing for the dna sequencing also you need restriction enzyme in order to cut when the genome sequencing has been uh, accomplished it was done like that so you must have restriction enzyme in order to make the very humongous dna into a short stretch and this these short stretches will give you more or better idea what to under, how to learn the dna stretch and it can be achieved achieved by restriction enzyme come to the physical map suppose if you don't know what is the exact physical map of a dna you can do you can use the restriction enzyme suppose if you can take one restriction enzyme let's say one particular restriction enzyme will cut dna three times second restriction enzyme will give you cut four times so suppose if you will three fragment or four fragments you would like to know what is the exact exact physical map of a particular dna stretch in between these two or overlap sequence or mass sequence and in order to understand the mass sequence you must have this kind of restriction enzyme it will give you the correct physical map between the two uh, between the two restriction enzymes in a particular fashion and it will give you many other informations now come to the construction of genomic library or cdna library again for the cdna and genomic library of course for the cdna library you have to go for the rt pcr and you can have the uh, single strand dna and from there you can go for the cloning purpose but again if you will have the convenience of the restriction enzyme the clone can be much easier as i explained you in the in, in the in a case of uh, amplicon where you can load two different restriction enzyme in the forward region as well as in the reverse uh, region that is, wh what does it mean forward primer as well as the reverse primer so you have to load the different restriction enzymes which is compatible with vector on the forward primer as well as the reverse primer and this approach can also be used in the cdn library where you should have a particular length of a dna that you can easily or conveniently cut with the restriction enzyme so you can you may or may not use now come to the generation of artificial vector suppose if you if you want to prepare an artificial vector that vector has to be carried a lot of different uh, restriction enzyme in the polylinker region and for that you would again need a specialized methodology of restriction endonuclease that can easily be accommodate these restriction enzyme in a particular vector and again like for the chip suppose if you want to prepare a chip which has a lot of dna molecule if you can digest this chip with the restriction endonuclease it can also give you information that how it uh, uh, works properly in a small fragment if you want to prepare a probe you can prepare a probe by the uh, digestion of the different restriction endonuclease thanks